Hey, welcome back to another Shooter's Row. I better turn the light on. So yeah, I'm here with um, the very big and tall Johnny Korak. Co I think I got that right. The practice time. Konogorak. <laughs> no, Konogorak. Yeah, it's a challenge. <laughs> so thank you, Johnny, for being on the show. And I've got my, um, my co-host, um, Lloyd, the man, Coach Lloyd, Sorry, I should guys. say, just to add him a bit of respect there. Coach Lloyd. So, co Coach, um, you you are our guest in today. So, can you can you kick us off? Yeah, look, it's a um, it's a special time. Um, like I said, we had Obi on a couple of weeks ago. Now we've got you know Big Johnny. Um, Johnny's always held like a little special place, um, special guy, Newtown Junior at CSBA, and um, you could always tell he was going to go far. So it was. It was always up to him, and he's done it, um, which I'm quite proud of him. So, it's a, it's a big thing. Sure. So, thanks, Johnny, for being on, bro. It's um, ah, I appreciate geez. you being on. No, I'm happy to be here. Very happy to be here. Hey, um, so we're going to go to college, man. Right. So, what was the college experience like overall? Just overall, as in between the three, but just overall as a as a big thing. Um. It's kind of hard to describe it in one word, you know, like it's got a lot of ups when, you know, you're winning games and you're winning, you know, those little championships like I did at Southwest. But um, there's a lot of lows as well, you know, when things aren't going your way and then obviously you're halfway across the world. Um, man, it's tough. So it's it's a massive journey, but honestly, wouldn't trade it for the world. It's bloody awesome. Yeah, so he went over to like Ole Miss, so Ole Mississippi, um, mm -hmm. one of the, the big big colleges. Um, that was your red shirt year, right? So yep. um, practice, um, you could compete in practice. Mm -hmm. Did, were you able to sit on the bench and stuff like that during home games and away games? Did you get to travel with the away? So I didn't travel to most away games just because it was extra money that they didn't need to spend since I wouldn't be playing. But Every home game, I was on the bench, um, uh, you know, getting around everything. So, um, even though you're a red shirt, you stay involved with everything, with all the processes, with all the film, weights, practice, you know, game day rituals and all that type of stuff. So, it's it was awesome. So, what was the actual, like, classification for you to be a red shirt? So, like, red shirt is where you can't play for the year, but... That's based on a external factor. So yep. uh, I know a lot of kids here in Australia, they do the extra year of high school, which actually mm -hmm. red shirts them for their first year. Was that the case for you or was that something exterior? No, so the reason I red shirted was, so I was a walk on at Ole Miss, I was trying to earn a scholarship. And we figured if that doesn't work out with Ole Miss, um, I could, um, essentially say graduate, uh, transfer and go play four years still, which is what I did. Um, so, you know, it's hard to get minutes on the court as a walk-on because um, you've got so many high-level guys in front of you. Um, and especially as a freshman, you know, playing in the SEC, it's extremely difficult to get on the court. So um, that's the reason I started as a red shirt at Ole Miss instead of, you know, using that as a full year to play or try and get on the court. Right, so right. it's all it's all it's all miss. So it's, uh, I, I messed that up. It's not Ole Miss. There's uh, most commentators get it's all miss. It's all miss. So my bad. <laughs> hey Johnny, I got a question for you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at the shoot as well, we like to be educated and we think we can smell. So I, I want to ask you a question. How do you spell Mississippi without actually having to look it up? M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-I. Oh, we have some educated men in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you must have looked that up. You must have looked that up, my friend. You must have looked that up. No, that's that's a thing in this in in Mississippi, man. They that little quick saying to to spell it really quickly. The M I S S S I S S I P I. You know, it's about the speed. Huh? Was, it's about the speed. Yeah, you get it out it quickly before you begin. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, just people don't know. I can't even spell my name. 
I can't even spell my name. She's going to spell Mississippi that quick. Man. <laughs> and so, Johnny, um, so, so we just talked about, I guess, your red uh, shirt experience. Um, what was the motivation for you? And, and, and what got you uh, on court um, really ready to push the, the pencil and, and work on your craft, especially the three ball and, and the shot that now is a thing of beauty? Um, honestly, trying to separate myself from other bigs, you know, I kind of think the stereotype associated with bigs, especially my size, was slow, unathletic post players that can't really score outside of the low to mid range shot. So being able to stretch out the court and shoot the three consistently, as well as, you know, move well and defend well on the court. Um, I think that kind of really motivated me and it kind of worked out for me. I think when, you know, colleges looked at me for recruiting. Sure. And um, looking at all the colleges you went to, um, what, what was the difference in weather from Ole Miss uh, moving to Tennessee and then to UTRGB? Yep. So, honestly, they're all very similar. They're all southern states in, the, in America. So, um, Mississippi's right here, Tennessee's right here, and then Texas was down here in the corner. Um, and they were all bloody hot. It was always pretty warm. Um, Mississippi winters in Tennessee kind of got cold. Um, you know, a lot of people from the northern states would disagree that it was cold, but it was bloody cold when it was snowing every now and again, a bit of ice. So I thought it was cold, but um, Texas was always hot. It was always over 20 degrees, no matter what season you were in. Um, summer probably got up to 45 degrees one day and I absolutely loved it. I'm all about that hot weather. Yeah, because that's where you live and you, you you spend your time now. So you spend your time in the, the warm weather. So, exactly. I mean, 45, 45 Celsius, jeez. We're, we're, we're talking 105, 110 Fahrenheit. So, yeah, we're, nice, talk, we're talking nice hot weather. Nice yeah, we're warm. talking hot weather. I mean, a good day in Los Angeles is, you know, 100 degrees. So, that's their Fahrenheit. So, that's them hot days. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, plus the humidity was crazy as well. Like, It'd be 105, 110 Fahrenheit with 100% humidity. So it felt like way more. Yeah, it's way too hot. I mean, I, I'm glad you enjoy it, but that's, it's a little, <laughs> that's a little barbecue for me. Yeah. <laughs> Not barbecue chicken. Uh, hey, um, you, so you transferred. Yeah, but it, you, you, you alert that a lot. I'm telling you, <laughs> when you're playing, when you're playing, I'm watching. Uh, that's it's barbecue chicken. I'm watching out for people. <laughs> I need to, yeah, I need to call an ambulance for some people when you're playing. <laughs> hey, um, when you're transferring, so you get, so you go early miss, um, southwest, and then you go to that nice name UTRGV. <laughs> like Chung, Chung, you gotta you gotta slide that one. It's it, it rolls off the tongue. Hey, gotta what, say what's faster. The <laughs> um, what's the what's the barriers like? So you know, like when you transfer, I, I know it's hard because you've got to you do your skulls and stuff like that. Um, and also you got to change the living environment. So what's that sort of like when you go and transfer and you transfer multiple times, you've got to try to change all that stuff? Oh, just getting used to different things. Um, I'll miss it was living in a dorm on campus um, and that wasn't too bad. I actually really liked it. The facilities were really good. Um, the food on campus was actually really good and it helped me put on a lot of weight, which is what I needed at the time. Um, Going to Southwest, it was a bit different. We were living in apartments off campus. Um, so it was a lot more cooking um, on my own, which I actually enjoyed. Forced me to, you know, teach myself how to cook at least a little bit and look at at least nutrition, you know, in a different way. Um, and then budgeting for that type of cooking as well. Um, and then furthermore, going to UTRGV, it was kind of the same living, um, just a little bit better, I reckon. Um, it was apartments as well, um, pretty big rooms, and obviously um, the cooking. And I'd, I mean, I loved it. It was good. It was a really fun experience living on my own, living, you know, away from home. Um, so 
Yeah, that's cool. Oh, so you, you touched good. on it. You, you, so look, good. Good. No, I was just saying the, the apartment sort of life, that's off campus. So, hmm. so what, what is that close by to campus or is that yeah. something oh. that you... It's um, like, it's walk, walk distance or do you have to like bus it or something like that? No, nah, so southwest, uh, it was did a, it was less than a, it was probably a kilometre from the school maybe. Um, I bloody turn out of the apartment, walk straight, walk left, and I'm at the school. Um, and then at UTRGV, it was literally across the road from the apart the college, so it was pretty much on campus still, but across the road. So um, it wasn't far at all. Yeah, you talk about a kilometre for you. That's 800 of my steps. That's seven of your steps. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, seven, that's, seven, that's seven one, my friend. That, that's that's seven steps for you. That's 800 for people like me. So that's a, <laughs> that's a little bit of a difference. Nah, it's, it's, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Johnny, um, so, so because you stayed off campus, um, let, let, let's um, give us an idea of um, how it was it like living, I guess, away from Australia? Um, you know, it wasn't too bad. It took a while to get adjusted to at first. Um, obviously living on your own as opposed to living, you know, at where I was, I was living with my parents before, um, you know, so they're babying you, they're cooking for you, they're paying for all the groceries, you know, you don't really do much, you know, they're cooking, doing your laundry. So it's nice and easy. And then when you kind of get that shock of moving, you know, halfway across the world, and you've got to do all this stuff on your own now. I thought it was pretty interesting and it was good to get adjusted to and it kind of taught me a lot, you know, a lot of essential life skills that, you know, I can apply to the future as well. So it was good shock at first, but eventually it was pretty chill. It's always a, um, that barrier for like guys when you've got mum and dad at home and you've got cooking and stuff like that. And then you have to go and do stuff for yourself. But also, exactly. like you said, it, grow, it grows you up for the future, like um, whether or not it be you play professionally or you um, take something from school, a degree, and then you go and do it. I mean, it, it's a big thing for like people to grow up. So, I mean, like look at you now. So kudos to, to <laughs> that, that environment. I mean, exactly. you yeah. can actually you can actually like fend for yourself. So mm -hmm. um, talking in terms of practice, so what was the practice like when like let, let's just let's skip um red shirt and um southwest let's go like utrgv mm -hmm. crack name um <laughs> what what was it what what was it like week to week so you know what i mean so in terms of like week to week so you knew where your game schedule was mm -hmm. did your practice sort of t um tailor to your game schedule and your, your lifting things like that everything tailored to your week to week right yep yep so essentially it'll be split up into probably three or four main parts so you've obviously got your summer workouts when you first come into um you know college then you've got your pre-season obviously in season and then post-season um so like that's you know after you've gone through all your you know um playoff runs and all that type of stuff and you're just purely getting ready for either the next year or the next level. Um, uh, Pre-season, it was pretty much a six day a week type thing. Um, it's pretty intense, two and a half to three hour practices most days, plus probably an hour long lift or hour and a half worth of weight. So um, it was pretty full on um, and it, I, it was, took a little bit to adjust to um, from JUCO. You know, sometimes the guys are just uh, clearly a different level. The physicality was a, at a much higher level compared to JUCO um, at UTRGV. So getting used to that took a little bit and my body felt it definitely at the start. So um, once I got into that rhythm, it became a lot easier to handle. Um, you know, I think for the, the most part, our trainings were at 7.30 in the morning. Um, and they'd go till about 10, 10.30. Some guys would go to class, some guys would go lift. Um, I always had afternoon scheduled classes, so I'd go straight from training to a lift 
um, and it was good, man, I loved it. Um, in season, they definitely tailor it around games. Um, you'll usually, I think the way we played it when it was conference time, it was a Thursday game and a Saturday game or something like that. Um, and so we'd have practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they'd be a lot lighter sessions as compared to preseason. Um, obviously you'd have your game. Friday would be a very light shoot around and then just kind of learning, you know, the next team that you're playing and then straight into a Saturday game and Sunday you get off. So um, it's still like a six day a week thing um, with maybe two or three lifts in the week. Um, that way you're just not overstressing the body too much. Um, so yeah. So that, that so practice would include, do you go video sessions or is it not that in, uh, entailed for sort of the college environment? Not, not like in no. NBA where they, they have a that environment. Do you, do you have that video no, session? We, we had video, we had video pretty much. Um, at the start of the week, we'd watch film on ourselves from the previous two games. Um, and then the next day, we'd, we'd pretty much have film before most training sessions just to get us looking at the other teams, getting ready for who we were playing next. So, no, we, um, we've had some pretty intense film sessions. I think UTRGV, most of them were 30 minutes to an hour long. So, you know, they were pretty, pretty in-depth. And I mean, we had one guy who was specifically, that was his job to cut up film and have it ready for the coaches to watch. So, um, yeah, it was pretty intense. So, um, that's that's one of the ones. Um, T? Yeah. So, yeah, are, are we good with uh, college, Lloyd? So, we can move on to the next so one? We good, we, uh, yeah, we're good with college. Uh, uh, just the other one. Like I said, um, UTRGV, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. <laughs> that's it. Um, so, if, if we're talking in terms of, like, Texas and things like that, um, NBA people would know you've got your Houston, you've got your San Antonio Spurs, um, <laughs> and, and and you've got Dallas. So we're in terms of um, UTRGV. Whereabouts are you guys? Are you placed in the middle, sort of a bit uh, south? So uh, UTRGV is dead set right at the bottom of Texas. It's like right on the border. Um, where I want to say three hours south of San Antonio. So. Um, and you know, Texas is a massive state. You know, you could drive for a day and still be in Texas, which is mental. Um, but yeah, we are three hours south of San Antonio and about six hours south of Houston. So those were relatively the two closest NBA teams to us. And they obviously drew the bigger fan bases where we were, especially the Spurs. So, yeah. Yeah, Johnny. So I wanted to ask, I guess, um a lot of people focus on you because you're a basketball player, seven two. Uh, can we ask what uh, degree did you compete or uh, complete there when you were in in the US? Yeah, so I started out as a computer science major, and I got through the first year of it. Um, I did all right. The class, like computer science wise, I did very well. I think I had either A's and B's all around. So, um, but it just wasn't enjoyable to me. Um, so I ended up changing my major to business um, with like a minor in marketing and communication. So um, that was a lot more interesting to me and it's very applicable to a lot of fields, you know, outside of basketball and even inside of basketball. So um, yeah, that's what I ended up with. And did you um, do that course as a, uh, maybe a fallback if basketball didn't work out or did you always have yeah. basketball like the, the basketball was the main thing and then if yeah, that didn't work out you'll get no. yeah. yeah basketball is definitely the main thing but obviously having a good fallback plan is is a great idea you know you never know you know god forbid something happens on the court that puts you out for the you know the remainder of your career um so having that degree two degrees because you get your uh, associate's degree from junior college and then you go and finish your bachelor's at uh, a four-year school. So um, having those looks great on a resume. Um, and yeah, business seemed like a good idea too. It was interesting and 
it allowed me to focus on basketball just as much as I was focusing on school. Mm. Yeah, because I I came from a computer science major too, um, and I also like business, so I guess our, our, our minds are very similar in that way. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's what I was going to say. I think you're preaching to uh, to T, the choir there, and the <laughs> business and that sort of stuff. I know, I know that's what he's all about. So, a um, little quick shout out. Congrats, T, to uh, getting that job, man. <laughs> so, Thanks, bro. Congrats, mate. Congrats. Hey, Congrats. Yeah. Good time. Yeah. 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 That, I told you, you were going to get that thing. So, I told you. Thanks, bro. Hey, uh, Johnny, just my last one for college stuff. Um, is there anything that you would change or do again in college to make it a better experience? So looking as a platform like this one, so we're trying to shoot to kids as well and like guys that are looking to go to college. Um, mm. Is there something that maybe you would do again? I mean, I know you transferred a couple of times. I said this to Obi as well. Big Obi Shay, shout out to Obi. Um, big Obi's. Big, o- um, big Obi's. Um, yeah, it's, it's sort of like a, what would you do again? Like as in you would maybe like he said about visiting schools so visit Mm. prior to going um because i know when he transferred to florida um he said that when he went there first he like when he went there to transfer he loved it um and that was his thing so maybe about visiting before you sign or what what's sort of your thing that you would do i think in particular the way i started i kind of expected things to fall into my lap just because of where I was, you know, I kind of got that sense that I was better because I was at Ole Miss, not purely because I was putting in work. Um, So I think the main thing that I would have changed was how much I was in the gym when I first started college. Um, Because if you want to get anywhere, man, you've got to be a gym rat. You've got to be in that thing 24 seven. And I mean, I had access to that gym literally 24 hours of the day seven days a week i could go in whenever i want there was the shooting guns i could go put up shots i could do whatever you know and i think i didn't take advantage of that when i was first there um and i don't think i realized what level i needed to be to earn a scholarship um and then also taking care of class makes your life a whole lot less stressful um you know my after my learning experience at Ole Miss, life became a whole lot better because I started taking care of the classroom. I started working out tenfold more, you know. I made it less about, you know, expecting things to happen for me and more about going and getting getting it myself. So I think for kids that are coming into college, Don't sit around and wait for things to happen. Go grab it straight away, get in the gym, go put up shots, it doesn't matter. You know, video games can wait, you know. Getting better can't, it's it's all about getting better. And I think that's where I find it kind of failed the early part of my college career. It's like the whole thing about um, taking the opportunity that you have, like, cause you're in college, Just, just maximize opportunity and get there. Because we, we, we spoke to uh, Vanessa too, um, Panonousis. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, I, I um, pronounced that correctly. <laughs> she corrected me many times there. Um, Panonousis. Yeah, she... Panonousis. Panonousis. Ah, you got to say that <laughs> slowly. Okay, it's not like Mississippi. It's Panonousis. Okay. <laughs> shout out, shout out to yeah, don't, uh, Vanessa. Don't, yeah, don't spell it though, because you probably get that wrong too. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so she, she was saying, um, just be... Um, yeah, just she, she really enjoyed her four years and in college, and and she said yeah she she pretty much put everything her like her whole life towards it, and that that was the best experience I guess in her life like in terms of basketball was four years of best experience. So it definitely what it reflects what you're saying, Johnny Fisher. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it definitely it, it makes a, it makes a big point, but um, like to all the kids that I coach here and they want to go away, I say listen. The wording student athlete means a lot. Your student first, athlete second. Yeah. Maybe one yeah. percent of the guys in the states make it to, you know, the NBA. The next nineteen or you know twenty six percent make it to Europe or play back in Australia or play elsewhere. The student part is your 
sort of half your priority. And Johnny just made mention of that, that the student part is a big thing. Yeah, so the coaches student, put, ath- student athlete is yeah, big. The coaches, the coaches put a massive emphasis on it too. Um, you know, because one, if you're not passing your classes, you're not eligible to play and that's because of the, the NCAA has made that a mandate like you have to have a certain GPA to be eligible to play and if you're not making that and you're going to sit down and you've got to get in the books otherwise you're booted you know they're not going to your school's not going to re-sign you for another year you know um, so it's definitely a major thing I guess that's against, um, we, like we see in Hollywood movies and sometimes documentaries where, I guess like Coach Carter, where, 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 where all the, I guess, top athletes in the school get, get, get um, like A's like, or B's or whatever, they, they get enough to pass. So, so is yeah. that just a myth, uh, Johnny, that, that that doesn't happen in real, in, uh, real life? Uh, I mean, I think that it's, it's hard, like, as you know that movie coach carter you could see as soon as the coach as you know he came in it's like all right you guys are getting your grades right if you're not we're not training we're not practicing we're not playing and it kind of reflects on college you know if you're not getting your classes sorted and taken care of the coaches aren't going to let you play because one it's illegal and two they're not going to want to have someone who's not going to pay attention enough to you know sit through an hours long worth of class just to get you know enough marks to even just pass like it's not difficult just to see average a passing average is eligible to you know let you play and um some guys prioritize it a lot more um i've had teammates that probably graduated with 3.8 averages and then some that were a lot closer to two average, which is a C average. So, um, but they all passed. They all took care of their business in the classroom. They got their degrees, and they were all good to play. You know what I mean? So, I think it's a major thing. It's super, super important. Lo, did you have any more questions about uh, college before we move on? No, but that's a big that that one. There is a big thing. Like I said, student athlete. Um, I mean, if you're a dumbass in the classroom, you're probably going to be as such in on the court. So, coach, coach, that's what I mean. If you watch Coach Carter, it's probably one of those things where you see they actually do take into into account your your GPA or your what you said, Johnny, your three point eight or your twos. So you mm-hmm. go your twos in your C's or your three point eights where you're working, you know, your B plus A minus advantage. So it's probably a good thing that you work on your class as well. Sure. Uh, let's move on to, um, John, let's move on to uh, the, the Sydney Kings. So, so, you, so you're a developer player for the Sydney Kings. Congratulations. Um, that's awesome. Thanks, man. Um, cheers, cheers. How did the opportunity come more, about? More deserve it. That was deserved, though. That was big deserved. Deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, so, so how did the opportunity uh, come about? So um, when I first got done um, with college and kind of just um, starting to figure out where I was going to be moving towards professionally, um, I think uh, the assistant coach at UTRGV, who was an Aussie bloke from um, Perth, he knew um Will Weaver, I think, at the, that point, um, and just kind of got us in contact. And me and Weaves just started having a chat. And when I got back to Australia, I started working out with um, Adam Ford, Coach Forty, um, who was going to be assistant coach for you know that team coming in. So I started working out with them. I just kind of stayed amongst it, and um, yeah, just kind of worked out my way into a, a DP role with them you know, training pretty much five days a week with those boys and um, absolutely loved being a part of that. It was unreal, you know, especially like meeting Luke Longley, uh, Andrew Bogut, um, Alex Marich, you know, those are three incredible big men for Australia. Um, yep. and being able to learn yep. from those blokes was bloody huge. 
I was going to say, when you said you are a UTRGV assistant was from Perth, I was going to say there's, you know, Adam. So, I mean, Adam was a big find for um, the Kings, yeah, leaving the massive. Wildcats. So, that yeah. that was, uh, I mean, and, and he's probably a good guy too. So oh, um, Great bloke, great bloke. Does some good workouts. I've seen some of his stuff. Um, Intense. Yeah, good luck to you. Mate, yeah, kicks my good ass. Luck getting, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, just uh, good luck getting through a workout for 40 minutes, a post yeah. an hour. So, yeah. Yeah. Good guy to get through. Oh, absolutely. Um, what was practice, I guess, practice like as a DP? And did you sit out a lot and be, be out a lot involved in uh, practice scrimmages, etc.? Um, I just, practices with Weaves as the head coach are actually really good. Um, you are very involved, whether it was, you know, certain drills where we'd stay on like us dps would stay on defense and it was just kind of waves of guys you know running a bit of offense against us or you know we'd be on offense trying to score against them if they're trying to work out a new kind of defensive coverage um so it was really good and um honestly i learned a lot just being around you know that training it was great um man like I'd be kind of like a rotation player in training for kicks most of the time. Um, so every time he got tired, I'd sub in for him. I'd, you know, go do the, the up and downs for as long as he wanted. And then when he was ready to get back amongst it, you know, quick sub out and, you know, back to hanging out and talking with some of the other players on the side and just watching. Um, but for the most part, you know, you're very involved in practice. Everyone is, it kind of minimizes the amount of people sitting down for 90% of the time until you get to the, you know, five on five full court type scrimmage stuff. And then it's maybe sitting down for a little bit. Um, so you do get very involved in it, even as a DP. I mean, just for the people out there, Kicks is Daniel Pickett, who, um, Johnny now plays with at Ride uh, Inner West Bulls, sorry, Inner West Bulls. Um, Form, former Boomer. Um, former Boomer, former uh, fighter with the Philippines, um, <laughs> the initiator, uh, just FYI. Uh, but yeah, Kicks is his na- uh, nickname, but yeah, um, utmost professional and probably another guy that you know, you're going to learn a lot of from the Waratah competition with uh, with Kicks and Mola. So it's, it's Another good thing for um, your development too. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So you said a little bit about Bogut. So when he was at, when he was at practice, when he was at practice, um, like as a, as a big and I know you touched on uh, kick it because you you've probably got a similar game to him with the yeah. pick and pop and um, that perimeter thing. Did Bogues give you uh, a bit more information and stuff like that and a bit bit more like under the wing stuff uh, in terms oh. of like wh- where you want to go and what you want to do, reads and things like that? It, it depended on the situation. A lot of the time it was me coming up to him and asking him certain questions on, you know, obviously he's a great shot blocker and learning timing from that and what he sees as cues as to when to go up was pretty interesting to me to learn about Um, and then defensive reads and that type of stuff Um, but honestly I probably learned a lot more from kicks obviously because we our game is very similar Um, I kind of gravitated gravitated towards him more than I did Bogues but at the start I did work a lot with Bogues um, in workouts um, and just it was a lot more banter than it was learning stuff um, just keeping things light because you know he's a, at this point he's a bloody veteran so um, you know I'd hate to be that pestering little chicken you know asking questions every now and you know every 30 seconds like oh what's this what's that instead of you know just being a you know a professional and knowing when the right time to ask a question is compared to annoying a bloke so um, I wouldn't say he took me under my wing but he definitely was willing to answer and help every time I had a question. So still great bloke, awesome bloke. 
I like the the pestering chicken thing. I mean, you probably could, you probably got to pester him a lot more. Um, you had a lot more length and stuff like that than kicks or Moller or, I mean, tape. Tape was six four, like yeah. But you probably that that lengthy guy that was able to pester him, in, like you said in workouts. So you had that yeah. length where that little left hand jump hook. You probably you, did you catch a couple of them. You would have caught a couple of those like uh, rocks on that one. Honestly, that you little, kicked little, my ass. He... Don't say that, man. You got to say yes. I got him. Uh, I hate to lie, man. He kicked my <laughs> ass. He's it's unbelievable how good he is, and he he honestly shocks you at how quick he is too. His off the dribble yeah. step is extremely quick, and it kind of caught me by surprise at the start when I first got involved with, you know, scrimmaging against him and guarding him. Um, but yeah, he's an unreal player. He's so hard to guard, very versatile, and extremely strong. So um, definitely taught me a lot. That's cool. Like I mean, for you, like, and if I if I was around there. Um, a guy that's won an NBA championship plays with guys like you know Curry and Thompson. Um, did you ever sort of you know just where you sit in the stands, changing shoes at, at the end of practice, just ask and stuff like that? Did you like um, you know? Did you ask him like, and and what the life was like in the NBA? Did you ask sort of stuff uh, like that? A little bit. I didn't ask too much because um, most of the time he'd be straight up to the change room getting physio done because obviously he's getting towards the end of his career and his body's kind of falling apart. So, um, yeah, just maybe a couple things here and there. I asked probably about players. I think I asked about KD and what he was like. Um, he said he was a pretty interesting character. Um, and he said Kyrie was a pretty interesting one too. Um, obviously when he was at Cleveland for that very short spurt, but- 52 um, seconds, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, no, he was extremely interesting to, you know, just chat shit about. It was good. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, T? Yeah, so, so Johnny, um, I guess after the, I guess, Sydney Kings, the Belama player, and we're looking to the future, uh, what would be your next move? Um, are you looking for a full-time spot? On, on the Kings, um, we we know that the Albany uh, Albany uh, NBL one thing fell through because of COVID, uh, but we want to uh, gauge what your goals are in the next one five slash ten years. So yeah, the Albany fell through, um, and you know there's not much you can do about that. But um, honestly, at this point, I'm just trying to play as much as I can. Um, you know my agents trying to find contracts here and there and it's been difficult just because you know getting footage in games that actually matter um has been difficult because of the whole virus thing um but yeah i'd 100 love to be you know a full rostered contract player with the kings and that's obviously a massive goal of mine and i know i'm putting myself in a great position to get that spot um within you know, the next couple of years and all it takes is just a couple of little development, you know, years sometimes or, you know, taking contracts in different countries and then kind of coming back to it, um, you know. So I think that, yeah, the goal is definitely play in the NBL at least. You know, I'm not picky about who I'm playing for. Obviously, it'd be great to be playing for Sydney because I grew up watching them, you know, grew up going to the games and idolising the fact that, you know, this is our pro team. You know, it'd be awesome to play for them one day. But honestly, the NBL is the NBL, and being in any team is, you know, a huge, huge milestone. So, um, yeah, definitely looking forward to trying to earn that contract. Yeah. So, so it's safe to say that you just want to improve as a player, and I guess with that improvement will come the contracts and the opportunities um, where they present themselves, and you're definitely exactly. going to take them. So awesome. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, uh, put it out there to Hammer. Hammer, you know me. Johnny needs to be in the conversation. And Rucker, that's another one. Uh, Caffino, put put this man in the list. I'm, I'm telling you, you're not going to be disappointed. The, the way you shoot the ball, I mean, look at last Wednesday night. We were together, you know, at a, at, when, you, when you had a, a, a scrimmage game. 
I mean, I, I don't think you missed. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, between, uh, you know, Darrell and uh, myself, who, you know, used to coach you, um, I don't think you, you missed many. So, um, I mean, I just kind of needs to be in the conversation. Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky points but, cheeky. or something. I don't know. Something just like just that. a cheeky, but <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, it, it's it's not like it's about us, it's about you. And uh, uh, they, they started talking smack and I didn't like that. So, I mean, we had four players on the court at one time and they were still talking trash to us. So I was like, uh, I don't know. I yeah, don't know the, that one. yeah, the job and didn't get done for them. Lost by 20. Yeah, I feel you, but that's what I'm saying. They're, you know, the, the guys that are out there on these pods that watch this stuff, um, I'll be looking at Johnny, I'm telling you. <laughs> nice. Sydney, please, I want to put that Sydney hat back on. I don't want Obi <laughs> sending me an Adelaide hat where I have to wear it. Um, <laughs> shout out Obes, shout out Obes. I'll still wear one, but it's only for your, for your games. Yeah, All right, Johnny. Um, so I have another question for your fan question. So, so who's your, uh, I guess, your favorite NBA team? And who's your favorite player? Uh, who and why? Oh, uh, you know what? I recently it's been Utah. I I just like watching Utah play. I like Donovan Mitchell, but mainly because of Big Joe Ingles. He's just a, he's so cool. He's so chill the way he plays, and he just gets under people's skin and he just shoots the piss out of the ball. Like he defends, he moves well for you know who he is, and he just. Oh, he's that glue guy on your team. It's just unreal. Love love watching him play. So Utah and Joey Eagles probably my phase at the moment. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question that's out of the blue. <laughs> it can be do with NBA or basketball if you want. So the yeah. question is, we asked Obi this question. So so I don't know, I'm not sure you remember what, what we're going to ask. So if you had to have dinner I guess you can invite any guests alive or deceased. Uh, who would it be and, and why? Ooh. And what is the question that you would ask them? So they're deceased or alive. So you have one question, the person, what is it and who is it? Man, that's tough. This is why I didn't send it to you. I want to put you on the spot. <laughs> put you on the spot. <laughs> take, take as much time as possible. We'll edit it out. <laughs> um, you know, I think having Shaquille O'Neal as a guest would be really interesting. Uh, big man, um, big man. Yeah. Just probably just learning about his little insights on things and then how to build businesses for post-basketball because he's done that incredibly well. Um, you know, he's set himself up for the future outside of his basketball, you know, um, fame and, you know, stature. You know, he still does all the broadcasting stuff and makes a lot of money through that. But then he's making millions through all these business ventures as well. And I think that's super impressive um, foresight from, you know, I guess big men of the past have been stereotypically kind of stupid you know it shows that um how smart he really is you know he's definitely set himself and his family and his future generations up with wealth that will make life so much better for them so definitely shack big big shack big shack yeah that's that's a good point that you brought out um he he, he literally is, a, I guess, a simple investor. I've, I've, I've seen some of his investments uh, in, in terms of where he puts his money and, and he doesn't complicate it. Like he, like he doesn't get into things that um, are really suspect. Like he, he yeah. gets into things that are in, in early and it gets in um, people that the right advisors to, 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 to actually allow him to get in. So yeah. that, that's a great answer. Lloyd? Thanks. I, 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 I agree. I mean, what did he say? If you want part of my cheese, you need to give me two degrees. <laughs> you want, if you want, if you want to be part of this, this so money. It's so if good. you want part of my cheese, you need to give me two degrees. So his his children ain't getting nowhere until they give them two degrees. Two degrees, I, degrees. I, I mean, what what did they say today? It was, a, it was thirty odd businesses that he that he's a part of. So yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he's entailed into everything, but. 
the thing is, he knows what he's doing. But as he said to his kids, you want any of my money? Go Give me some it. school. <laughs> Give me some out. school. Give me some school. Um, Johnny, I've got another one from outside the uh, the basketball frame. Mm-hmm. All right. So you've got enough money. You buy a boat. A boat? What is the name of it? When you own one, what would you name it? Hmm. So this is this is interesting because if you have a lame sounding boat, no one wants to get on it. You know what I mean? Like, you've got <laughs> ladies, a good. Yeah, yeah, yeah ladies. Let's go on my. Let's go on my boat. Ha, to, if you have a partner, do not name it her. Name it whatever you want, no, but this is what I'm no, saying. It's, it, it's a little mm. bit of a throw out there, but it, it, it's it's a good little thing. You can you can name it SS Regina. It doesn't matter, but that's <laughs> what I'm saying. It, it could be whatever you want. I asked a couple of people today, and I heard some names. And so I was like, "Ooh, that's not bad." I threw that out there just for you. I don't know. Far, far out. That's a good one. Because you've really got to think about it, man. Like, you've really got to think about that. Everyone's going to see it. It's not <laughs> something you can hide. Yep. It's not something you can hide. Um, mm. Unless we move on and then we'll come back to it. What do you reckon? Yeah, let's yep. go come back let's to it. it. Let me think about that. Let's move it. All right, what's yeah. the most useless, what's the most useless talent you have? <laughs> We we ask the hard hitting questions here. The shooters wrong. <laughs> um, hey, I thought I of all know, this stuff can, for you, man. I can chug a beer pretty quick. That's pretty useless. <laughs> I mean, most of us can do that. I mean, I mean, I can do that not uh, most days, but um, I don't know if it's uh, useless. Uh, useless. Um, I don't know. I could do that with my thumbs. I could do the Mexican wave with my thumb. Man, that's not, Wait, that's not look at that. It's not break that thing. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Actually, someone asked, useless. <laughs> someone asked me that today. Like, what's the most useless thing you can do? I mean, I can whistle out of my bottom lip. So, I mean, you get a, they get that little whistle yeah, see, out of I that. think it's pretty yeah. handy, you know, trying to catch someone's attention. It's not totally useless. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't whistle at them. I'll give you that tip. <laughs> All right, so let's go back. Name of a boat. Mm. What would you name it? It can be anything. It could be your mum's name, cousin's name, whatever. I mean, just a little something. Maybe uh, your first love or... Probably, let's go with the SS Full Send. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. SS Full just Send. Full Send, man. Whatever you do, see, Full Send it. See, what do you reckon? What does it mean, full send? Oh, it just it depends on the situation, really. Um, just giving it you your up, all. You, you put up a weak shot; it's going to get fully sent full send. back in oh, your okay. face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're going to um, get it. You're going to oh, maybe maybe for Johnny. I mean, after watching him play <laughs> last couple of weeks, maybe um, might be SS return to sender. I mean, um, SS, <laughs> SS RTS. <laughs> Yeah, you can say, yeah. full, full steam ahead, full send. <laughs> yeah, full send, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and, we're, and, we're not, and we're not playing on Sunday morning with him, I'm going to tell you that much. <laughs> I'll, be put, I'll be putting in the lights to try and get one in. So. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, Johnny, it's been great today. Um, I've got one more question for you. So, mm-hmm. if you had to nominate anyone, like I guess in associated with basketball, uh, to be on uh, the shooters' role, uh, who would that be? Um, you know, I think it'd be pretty interesting to get one of the older heads from the Kings on, maybe like Brad Newley or even just the freshly retired Kevin Mish. Man, they'd be super interesting with their whole careers and the, you know, retrospect on you know how basketball has affected their lives. Um, you know, obviously Newell's has played a lot overseas um, and a lot over here. And same with Kev. Kev's had a astounding career in the NBL. Um, so I think those would be two super interesting blokes to get, a, you know, get onto the podcast. Awesome, awesome. If, feel, if you, yep, go look. No, no, I, I'm down with you. I feel, I feel like if um, those are the people, I, I feel like this is what Trung's going to say. 
maybe you uh, you tag them, maybe hit them up because um, <laughs> I mean, I mean this is this is a lot of fun. Um, I know Tr- Trunks had a lot of fun. I've had more fun than anyone. Um, <laughs> it's good because I've known you since you were um, knee high to a sh- <laughs> No, no, let's, let's just go shorter than me. Um, that's probably easier because uh, you beat that at like eleven. So <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh, mate. It's not funny. It's true um, though. <laughs> <laughs> Full set. <laughs> don't you laugh. Full set. <laughs> <laughs> that, was exactly. that was a return to send that one. <laughs> I, I, I deserve that one. <coughs> but yeah, no, um, if you can, yeah, you know, drop and tag and whatever. Um, yeah, definitely. But yeah, um, for me, for me personally, like um, I know that Chung was the last question. Um, I appreciate you being here. Um, I know you've got a game at seven thirty. Um, good luck. Um, Thanks, I want, I, I want, I want thirty and ten. I'll see. Um, I, I want, an up, I want, I, I want. I want an update after anyway. I got um, you. Easy money. <laughs> but um, no, I appreciate you for being here. Um, I know you're a good guy. Uh, it's um, been my pleasure. Known you for a long time. Been awesome. I've been, known, been awesome. known you for a long time. Known your dad. Known you. You know. Now, now I know your little brother. So um, <laughs> yeah. Um, generations, but, man. <laughs> generations. Just that. Yeah, I appreciate you guys being here. Um, Shooters' no, role appreciates it. It's been yeah, awesome, definitely, man. Definitely, um, Johnny. One more thing, can you can you uh, outro for us? To just just tell all the viewers to subscribe, uh, follow all our social media, and Johnny loves us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give us uh, give the shooters roll a subscribe, a follow, and a like on all the social medias, and mate, get amongst it. It's great, love it. Johnny loves it. The big man loves it. <laughs> yeah, the big man. The big man. Big man. <laughs> Let's go. The Full big man. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Johnny. Uh, to the next one, guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Lloyd. A- a- any last thanks, words? Thanks, mate. All good. Last words. Uh, um, Johnny's getting a contract. That's that's my big thing. Yep. <laughs> Sydney Kings, and then on to the NBA. We'll, we'll be Let's watching go. your career, and we'll we'll do this again in a couple of years. <laughs> Beautiful. Sounds great. Thanks, Johnny. Cheers. Take it easy, bro. Thanks, guys.